So Nico Marzano, thank you for joining us. Um, you've curated an exhibition at the ICA on Pasolini, Pasolini uh, poetry and politics, just uh, with the release of his uh, biopic by Abel Ferrara. And it's three films that you've chosen, Akatoni, um, The Gospel According to Matthew, and Pigsty. Um, if we could start maybe by talking about why you picked those three films together. Yes, I, I felt that these three films um, were uh, um, pretty interesting in, in the sense that they were covering the different stages that I, I think Pasolini had throughout his career. Um, Akatone was made in 1961, um, and the story of this you know, uh, man, pimp, uh, living on the fringes of society, wandering for the streets of Le Borgate, which is this uh, suburb part of Rome. And, and he fell in love with uh, a prostitute, uh, but she goes to jail. Then he, he uh, then meets some, someone else, uh, tries to convert this other uh, woman to prostitution. And eventually decides to, 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 to find a job, but that didn't work out really for him. Dio parla, che ti è successo? Ma è successo che son feso! Ecco quello che mi è successo, lo capisci? Per piaste mille lire zotte mi sono andata a rovinare! Non mi poteva più ancora questa mattina quando sono uscito di casa! Ma Vittorio, calmate, non dico così. Ma fatela fare tua, falla finita. Gospel According to Matthew uh, was released in Italy in 1964 and it's basically a quite traditional uh, rendering of the Gospel, um, line by line, uh, that actually stirred a lot of uh, criticism because people and critics were saying how it's possible that such a non-religious man, uh, Pasolini, dares to take on, on the gospel and trying to recreate like, you know, the gospel as it, you know, as it is, like, you know, and by the book almost. Mm. And then we have Pigsty which was released in 1969. And uh, it's a very complex film. It's a film made by two stories. The first story focuses on this young man who turns into cannibalism, living around like, you know, a volcano um, that was set in Sicily, around uh, Mount Etna, uh, but eventually uh, will be executed by the establishment. Um, very minimal narrative, almost non-existent. And then the second story is the story of this young man, Julien, and his relationship with his father, or his non-relationship, to better say, with his father. And, and this story is his fascination about pigs. And, and then eventually will uh, get eaten by these pigs. I think I read a, um, something that he said, which was, um, society devours its own children. It was his sort of quote as to explain yeah. the film. And it's a film that is a clear attack on society, on capitalism, and how little uh, Italian society, but in general Europe, was doing for, for human beings and for, for citizens. Quei maiali? Sì, signore. Se uno non li avesse visti con i suoi occhi, mangiarsi un uomo, arrivando lì non si sarebbe accorto di niente. Non c'è rimasto neanche un segno, un pezzo di stoffa, mettiamo. Una suola di scarpa. No, niente. Un bottone. No, niente di niente. 
Allora. Non dite niente a nessuno. And so if we, and if we track back to 61 um, with Akatone, and you said it's very interesting that um, the, it's, a very, it's a neorealist film, but a very different, uh, yes. a very different time, type of neorealism, which maybe we can talk about sure, a little bit. Sure. While in the more uh, classical neorealism films of Rossellini, De Sica, uh, they were focusing on the common man. Uh, Pasolini was investigating the sub-common man, the sub-proletariat, uh, people living on, you know, on, on the very verge of society. Um, sort of morally ambiguous. Morally well. ambiguous, absolutely, as well. Accatone! Oh! Accatone, spiegami un po' la cosa. Me t'hanno rilassato, già stai fora. No, mo sto un galera per l'occhi belli della tua ragazza, sarebbe proprio da ride, sarebbe. And another thing that really um, amazed me about that film is that Pasolini not once decides to show the, the beautiful Rome, just showing on purpose the bleak side of what Rome was at the time, but I guess in his mind what Italy was at the time. So do you think, um, it, that, I mean, there was a sort of a, a condemnation in a way, or a criticism of Italy. Totally. That film. It was a very pessimistic film. Because the Gospel according to Matthew was made in 64. 64. 64. Yeah, 64. Um, so it's not so, it's only a few years after Akatoni, but you do get a real shift in terms of the subject matter. Yes. It's certainly not hopelessness in the Gospel according to Matthew. And I wonder if you could say a little bit about why, why Pasolini made that shift uh, at that time. Akatoni was uh, in a way very um, simple, cinematically speaking. Instead, with the Gospel, Pasolini is also trying to uh, establish himself as a, a cinema poet. So he's experimenting. Il quale fa sorgere il suo sole sopra i cattivi e sopra i buoni. So I think he's, he's interested in the message, but in the Gospel he's also interested in the cinematic language that he is using. So those shots of Jesus' faces in different times, in different places, I think it's also a way for him to experiment. And I also think that the Gospel is extremely important because in a way embrace the, the real Pasolini beliefs, which is merging arts, poetry and reality. He was extremely poetic, but he, he always wanted to remember himself and his audience that he was rooted in reality. Uh, because, like, most importantly for him, he was a political filmmaker, and especially when he was using cinema as a tool of expression, uh, even though this one, the Gospel, first look cannot look that political, but instead there is, like, you know, so much um, of his political beliefs and his political fights. Anch'io vi farò una sola domanda. E se voi mi risponderete, vi dirò io pure con quale autorità compio queste cose. Il battesimo di Giovanni, d'onde veniva? Dal cielo o dagli uomini? Se noi diciamo dal cielo, egli ci dirà perché dunque non gli avete creduto. E se diciamo dagli uomini, C'è da temere la folla, perché tutti ritengono Giovanni un profeta. Non lo sappiamo. E neppure io vi dirò con quale autorità faccio queste cose. In terms of the, the political sort of uh, expression, I think that we get it, um, I suppose, most obviously and most overtly in pigsty. Um, and as you say, it's sort of it's made at such a critical period and in, in Europe and in Absolutely. politics. Um, and Via Mischi is also in the film. Yes, um, as Ida, who, as the girlfriend. Exactly, yeah. was, who at the time was married to Jean-Luc Godard and had made La Chinoise just a year before and Weekend, weekend the, week, the year before that. And when, I mean, Pigsty for me, Weekend comes in my mind when I sort of see Pigsty somehow. Um, but I, one senses that that sense of anarchy and the, the criticism of capitalist society and what it's doing 
to human human relationships um, is very strong in Godard at that uh, specifically that period. And I wonder whether whether there was sort of communication between Pasolini and Godard, or whether they were sort of working in parallel, and to what extent each of them will have influenced each other. I'm like sure that. that as in Godard and as in Pasolini, um, there is like you know also this attack on the bourgeois class. I mean, Ida, uh, the character of Ida, is um, represents like you know pretty clearly um, the idea how like you know the bourgeois class is there just to you know Ida is heavily politicized as uh, a person. But doesn't do much. It's just there talking, talking about politics. Communism ti porta altre preoccupazioni. Per esempio, occuparti delle industrie di tuo padre. Sì, però in compenso mi protegge dal terrore. Lo sai bene quello che vuoi. Anche tu. È giunto il momento. I ragazzi di Berlino per la prima volta si muovono. Per protesta andranno a pisciare contro il muro in 10.000. I comunisti dall'altra parte staranno a guardare. A bit like in 1968, when there were like you know these huge heavy protests in the streets taking place in the streets of Rome, Pasolini was saying, "I am, you know, beside the police, the cops, because they are the real, you know, proletarian class trying to make a, a life out of their job, not the middle bourgeois class that is just like you know talking, uh, but it's more in a sense of showing off." their knowledge rather than working towards uh, cultural progression. Uh, Pasolini was always on the side of the outcast and I think that right now in this historical moment that we are all living like you know in Europe with this uh, extremely delicate dramatic situation with all these refugees trying to, to reach our shores, cinema should be there to voice all this fears, concerns, and lack of support from the political establishment. I'm sure that Pasolini, you know, they made like, you know, very important films yeah. about this situation. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, he's, he's pretty much missed us. And, and, and especially now, more and more cinema is just a tool uh, to entertain, uh, to kind of put people to sleep. Uh, so a filmmaker like Pasolini is there to remind us uh, that cinema is something else. Mm -hmm. Cinema is a form of like, you know, progression. We need not only to be focused about ourselves, but also about like, you know, the rest of the human beings. I think Pasolini did that in an, a wonderful poetic way, and, and, I, and I felt that needed to be uh, reminded. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Leo. Thank